Welcome back to the Visionaire 500K, Lowe's Motor Speedway, Charlotte, North Carolina. 79 laps completed, but the race has been red flagged. You see the competitors are back to the pit area. The machines have come to a stop quiet right now because there was an accident on lap 61 involving Stan Waddles and John Paul Jr. We were told some debris may have gone into the stands. That's the reason for the red flag right now. We're just going to wait till we have more information to pass along to you and so we can give you that information. There you look at uh, Sam Schmidt as he waits. Let's tell you the top five quickly here. Greg Ray in first. Scott Goodyear is second. Eddie Cheever has climbed to third. Sam Schmidt fourth. And Eddie Beachler now in fifth. Let's go to Vince Welsh. Vince? Well, I'm with the leader, Greg Ray, still in the cockpit. And, uh, Greg, obviously it's been uh, a hectic race out there. What's it look like from your perspective? Obviously you've been running up towards the front most of the night. No, the car is running uh, very well. Uh, there was really no need for us to uh, <coughs> chase down Buddy. Uh, we were as quick as he was, and we still have a long way to go. And, you know, I'm not sure exactly what happened to this big accident. I've been told that uh, somebody may be hurt, and uh, that kind of takes the fun out of it uh, when it happens. So, you know, it's kind of a lack of focus here. I still have a lot of work to do in front of me if we go green again. But I uh, hope everybody's okay. Talk about the distraction now that you've sat in the car. Obviously, the race has been red flagged. How difficult uh, is it, and what do you think about it? And as a team, how do you uh, handle this situation? Well, uh, I mean, again, I just hope everybody in the uh, stands are okay. And, you know, once we go green again, you have to just focus on uh, on your job at hand. And, uh, again, the car is going real good. Uh, you know, we certainly like to get our first win. And Can you talk about the racing with Buddy? The two of you obviously uh, have been very quick along with Cheever. Yeah, I mean, the car, the car is doing very, very good. Uh, it changes over the long run. Uh, certainly before we had the first yellow, uh, we were showing how quick the car could be. And... Uh, you're really pulling away, and that's the thing. If, uh, if you're going to drive fast, you really need to try to put yourself uh, in, in front of some traffic. Unfortunately, uh, you know, I drove really hard, used up the tires, and uh, Buddy was right there to capitalize on that. You feel like you've got the stronger car? Uh, I feel like everybody has a good shot. All these cars are running very, very well. And, uh, again, it's just going to be a high-speed chess game, and uh, you know, you've got to be around at the end. That's Greg Ray. Let's go to Calvin Fish. Well, Scott Goodyear is now unbuckling from his car. Scott, it seemed like Buddy Lazier and Greg Ray had a little bit more pace, but you really seem to be biding your time right now. Well, I think that's what we're trying to do. We made a change that last pit stop and uh, made the car a little bit better. It's still pretty early, though, so we're not panicking yet. Uh, Going to make some more changes before we go out again, keep working with some tire pressures and things like that and get the car to where we need it for the end. A lot of talk about with the Goodyear tires between the optional and the primary. I understand you started on the optional tire. Are you going to switch to the primary as it gets cooler? Well, we might give it a try and just see what it's going to do. But uh, right now we're uh, working with some tire pressures and uh, just some things within the car. So I think we might try that. We still got a long ways to go yet. Okay, thanks, Scott. And Vince Welsh has Eddie Cheever standing by. Eddie Cheever still in the cockpit here as uh, he's just removed the helmet. Uh, obviously, some pretty uh, fierce racing out there, but your, t your car certainly moved to the front in a hurry. I know you told me before the race that you felt like you had a good car. We're developing a bad habit of qualifying badly and racing well. I like to turn it around just a little bit and qualify a little bit better, but the car is running very well. It's the first time we've run with the Infinity engine, and uh, it's strong. I think it's... Uh, Hello, Infinity, right now. So we've got two pretty tough guys ahead of us, and uh, the race has not even started yet. Yeah, you're in third place behind Greg Ray and uh, Scott Goodyear. Talk about that Infinity, because there's been much made of the switch, particularly uh, you, quite frankly, the Indy 500 winner, a guy who's already won with an Aurora engine this season, making a switch at this time. I, I only made the switch because I believe it's a better engine, and I think they have a, a greater capability right now at this moment in time to give us a product that... Uh, can compete with Menard's engines and Kelly's engines, and uh, they are two Aurora's, and they do their own engines, and they have a lot of support. Uh, Infinity has always had a history of being very successful in racing, so I'm convinced that we've made the right choice, and with that engine and our Goodyear tires, I'm going to give these two boys ahead of me a very hard time. But Does, I, I don't ever, I don't really get going to the last 20 laps anyway, so I'm just tootling along right now. It's your first race with the Infinity. Does it feel different to drive a car powered by the Infinity motor compared to the Aurora, and how is it different? It's strong. It's got a lot of torque. Uh, it's very strong. We're learning. We're still in the learning stages of it, so there's a lot of things we have to understand before we get to Indy, but it has all the ingredients to be uh, uh, an Indy winner, and hopefully tonight will be a Charlotte winner. Eddie Cheever currently running third. Let's go to Calvin Fish, who's with the fourth-place driver. Well, the fourth-place driver is Sam Schmidt in the Sprint PCS car. Sam, car looks good again on full tanks and uh, got a good race set up. I understand you're concerned about some debris. 
Yeah, we uh, we were just kind of hanging out. We knew it was going to be a long race, a lot of problems, and uh, if we can pass, we've been passing. But uh, uh, Sprint PCS car is running great. Uh, but yeah, that last one, we missed all of it on the front straightaway. But the first time they brought us through the pit lane, there was some debris and a shadow that I didn't see, and that cut it. So we were watching the pressures. I knew I hit it. We were just watching the pressures through that whole yellow run, and they weren't going down. So I thought we were okay, and then we just did the inspection. So we go uh, we go back to yellow. We're probably going to pit. Under the red conditions, you're not allowed to work on the car, so you've effectively got to wait till the field rolls again before you can actually change this left front. Is that correct? Yeah, we won't have the greatest track position, but, I mean, the car's been really hooked up. It's just a matter of saving the tires and, you know, not getting out of hand because it's not the end of the race. So uh, we're still on the lead lap and, you know, just kind of biding our time. The car's running great. I mean, just fantastic. How do the conditions compare with this afternoon? You've got about 20 degree less track temperature. Does that affect the setup? It doesn't really affect the setup. I mean, our car's continuing to go to push because of the more grip in the rear with the cooler temperatures but uh, our biggest problem has been restart i mean uh, uh, every time i grab a gear the thing goes sideways you know so uh, uh, and then that last time i tried to short shift it a little bit too much and, and got on it too you know too soon short shift and it bogged and we got passed by two but uh, uh, we're just trying to keep it straight and uh, and uh, be around for the end sam schmidt confident of a good result but first of all they need to get that tire fixed guys back upstairs you know, Ari, uh, Dave, when I heard Eddie Cheever, I sensed that he was surprised at how well that was. Pleasantly infinity. surprised, <laughs> yeah, may I say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a couple of weeks ago when we heard he was making the switch, I mean, that was a big question. Everybody was asking, why would you go from the proven engine that you won with and, and make the switch? He says it's nothing about money. Well, that's some writers actually said it was all about money, and right. that is the farthest thing from the case. Yes, he has signed a contract that allows him to do some research and development that's added incentive, monetary incentive. But he wasn't going to make the switch unless he thought, hello, as he said, hello, infinity, <laughs> that it was time for it to strike. And, and he's right. I mean, you know, everything Nissan has done in the past, you know, with uh, especially IMSA racing, remember Jeff Brabham just winning everything in sight. And, uh, you know, when once they really get their teeth sunk into it, they make it happen. Hey, a driver that's got his teeth sunk into it tonight is Craig Gray. Yeah, if you're just tuning in right now, you may be wondering why is he out of the machine? Well, we're under a red condition. The red flag is out at the Lowe's Motor Speedway, the Visionaire 500K. 79 laps completed. Stan Waddles involved in an accident along with John Paul. Some debris flew into the stands. We're waiting for an update on that situation for you. And at this time, let's uh, take a look at the race leader right now. Greg Ray, 32 years old, chasing that dream of winning the Indy 500. Here's Jack Aroo. The first memory I have of wanting to drive a race car was probably third grade. You know, everybody watched Speed Racer, and I always fantasized about being Racer X. You know, the guy that uh, you know snuck into the Indy 500 when the when the green flag fell, started at the back of the field, won the race, and then disappeared. I just had always dreamed about it and wanted to do it. For some, his boyish good looks and disarming smile might be a bit deceiving. This businessman could easily live off the success of the Texas Marina that he owns and operates, but racing was something that he simply had to take a shot at. I used to work from, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night and come home and go to bed at 10, and I'd set my alarm clock at 2 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays because they'd show you know, racing repeats. And I remember this little voice popped up, well, you know, if you think you're so good at that, why don't you just go do it? And I couldn't, for the life of me, find a reason why I shouldn't do it. He set out to realize that dream, convinced that a bit of training at a driving school would help him achieve his goal, the Indianapolis 500. The instructor said, well, we want you to all stand up and uh, tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you're trying to do here uh, with a school. And I stood up and said, well, my name's Greg Ray. I'm an entrepreneur from Dallas, Texas. I've never been in a race car, but I want to win the Indy 500. And 40 people laughed their butt off. You know, lo and behold, by the end of the three days, I won the school race. Undaunted and with high expectations, Ray set out on the road to Indy. In 1992, he was rewarded with an SCCA Formula Ford 2000 championship. But as this young warrior advanced through the ranks, his dream stalled. You only get one or two chances where people really are going to notice you. You know, if people start to associate you at the back of the pack, 
how are you going to get opportunity? In 1997, Greg Ray made a decision that would affect the rest of his life. He hooked up with his longtime partner, Thomas Knapp, and joined the Indy Racing League. The arrangement brought both to Indianapolis in May. It's a big place, you know, and it's, um, it's so historic. Everything you look at, you've seen it on TV for years, you've seen it in the magazines, you've seen it on the front page of the newspaper. And it's just this total historic, gothic place. And I remember driving in between turns three and turn four, and there was a, like a linen truck in front of me. And this linen truck comes down, goes through the tunnel, and I'm right behind the linen truck. You know, hair starting to stand up on my hands and my, my arms. I'm looking around going, wow, this is cool. You know, this is, this is it. But the dream would have to wait a bit longer. On pace to qualify, the team ran out of fuel with just a half a lap to go. He eventually qualified 30th, but his starting spot led to other problems on race day. I remember when we pulled in and we got out because it started to rain pretty big. There was probably two or three pounds sand in my car from the start of this race. I mean, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is the cleanest, smoothest piece of racing pavement on the planet. But when you have, you know, 33 ground effects cars running at 220 something miles an hour, you know, it literally picks up everything you can pick up. And at, it deposits in the back row, I guess, of all the cars. I mean, I had sand, I had a beach in my car. Last year, Ray and Knapp returned to Indianapolis. They chose to wait for better track conditions as Billy Boat set the pole speed. And with just a little more than an hour left, Greg Ray took his shot. Qualify for the center of the front row if he can keep this up. If he can pick it up, then he oh, will run oh, right oh. into the wall. You know, I really wasn't thinking about pole. And when I was in the race car, I wasn't thinking about pole. I was just thinking about going as fast as I could. I mean, I didn't even look at the speedometer. I didn't the times. It didn't matter. And I was going for it. Driving the wheels off his car, Ray missled his machine into the front row, just missing Boat's pole-setting effort. Gentlemen, start your engines. Though gearbox trouble eventually knocked Greg out of the race, he did lead his first laps at the Brickyard, and that momentum carried him into Texas. Still down to a car length, less than a car length now, across the start-finish line. Greg Ray a little higher this time. Last lap. Woo! In the grass. Greg Ray in the grass. I think a lot of people, I mean, from any racing series and any newspaper and any announcer have said that that race in Texas was absolutely one of the best races they've ever seen. And it was, you know, it was a wheel to wheel, full tilt and boogie, pull your guns out and go to town. I mean, it was, it was a race. Now about two car lengths separating first and second. They flash by now 199 laps, 200 laps now complete, eight laps to go. And they have a Greg slower Ray's car front. Greg Ray has him. Tight foe, tight foe. He's in the fast traffic and he gets by using Buzz Caucus. He's your new leader, Greg Ray into turn three. They had 100,000 people at Texas Motor Speedway. I'm the hometown boy that sat on the front row with Indy 500, and so a lot of people there were, were cheering for Greg Ray. And I don't think they all realized it was 208 laps, because on lap 200, I was leading. And I think everybody in the grandstands thought I won the race. You know, they all cheered, ah. So we kept on going, they go, like, what are they doing? They're still, they're still going. Why are they still racing? But uh, again, I mean, it wasn't a victory but that's as close as we've come so far. A second place for our small team was a victory. That was a big boost for the team. This year, Greg has joined Team Menard, sliding into the seat once occupied by Tony Stewart. Thomas Knapp is again at his side, and the dream of an Indy 500 victory certainly seems within reach. Oh, yeah. I've seen it a hundred times. I think every driver that wins it has seen it a hundred times in his mind. You know, I, I don't know who it's gonna be more important to. It's gonna be more important to John Menard. It's gonna be more important to Greg Ray. Is it gonna be more important to my mom? You know, all I know is it's, uh, for anybody, it's a very special moment. But uh, yeah, I, I've visualized that. I can see that and uh, have high expectations.